Hi, I'm Ed Amorosa from Tag Cyber, and I'm here with my friend Menachem Safran, who is the Vice President of Product at XM Cyber. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to hearing about the company and about you and all kinds of things related to breach and attack simulation. I yeah. think I'm going to learn something. Today. I'm, I hope you do, and I hope it's going to be a great conversation and we'll have uh, you know, lots of fun. It's going to be good. Now, let's start with, uh, before we get into the technology, tell me about the company. You were telling me earlier about the the origins and very interesting. Yeah, so, so well, XM Cyber was founded by a very unique uh, founding team. You know, most, uh, at least in Israel, most Israeli cybersecurity startup, they are very, very young people coming just from the, from the army. So in our case, the, the founding team also came from the Israeli intelligence forces. Mm. But in this uh, specific situation, it's actually very, very senior executives that were struggling with the problems in cybersecurity uh, in before, before mm -hmm. in their job as executive. So the executive team are people that have very, very high experience. They have proven themselves to be able to build, uh, to build uh, large, exciting companies um, with vast experience. So for example, our president is Tamir Pardo. He was the head of the Mossad. Right. And, uh, and in their previous roles, they were struggling with a very, very important question for you know, every military or every high, uh, for, for an organization, they were asking, you know, are my critical assets really, really secure? Mm. And you know, in cybersecurity, you invest so much in different solutions, but in the end, you can't really answer these simple questions. You know, are, uh, am I secure? Is everything working fine? And they wanted to answer this question. So they came to found this team, three founders, Noam Erez, our CEO, right. uh, Tamir, as I mentioned, and Boaz, who was our CTO. He was the CTO also for the Israeli intelligence forces, so both the offensive part and the defensive part. They're very impressive people. I've had a chance to spend time, and they're super impressive, they're really yeah. capable people. Yeah, so, so that's, that's one thing. And they brought with them the culture of the Israeli intelligence forces. So most of the company are young people mm. coming from, uh, from the offensive cyber, because what we do as a breach and attack simulation, we mimic adversaries. So we need people that know how attackers, how hackers are actually thinking and working. So we have a lot of people from the offensive cyber background, very, very young people that are uh, innovative, you know, always spinning new ideas, you know, how we can do things different, how we can do things better. So this is the balance between, you know, the senior people with the executive, with the experience, and the, and the young people with the nice, the idea, the, the passion and everything. And I think this creates really a very unique culture of a company, which is great to work at. That's good, because you're right, most startups are they tend to be led by people who haven't done it before or maybe haven't managed a team. That's, that is a very unique setup. Yep. So it's working out well. Uh, team headquartered in Israel. Yes, headquartered in Israel, in Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. yeah. And doing, I would imagine, quite a bit of business here in the U.S. now. So most business is in the U.S., yeah. uh, in Europe, in the U.K., <coughs> and obviously in Israel. So those are the focus mm -hmm. point of the company. But we're growing globally, so this is great. Great. Well, now let's get into the, the technology. So um, some people would be familiar with the moniker breach and attack simulation. That's a, one of these categories that comes from the Gartner and analysts and so on. But tell us, how, how do you describe what you guys do? And what's the value that you bring to an enterprise that buys X, X, yeah. XM Cyber? Yeah, so, so really what XM Cyber, and in that, uh, in that manner, we're a bit of a unique animal mm -hmm. in the breach and attack simulation. Uh, we come to answer the simple question of are the critical assets really secure? So, yeah. for example, you've, you've, been, you've been a CISO, you've been an you know, executive in, uh, in, in IT, and the board comes and asks you a question, you know, they don't know what's an EDR. They don't know you in bot threat intelligence. They want to answer, okay, I have customer data. I have this, all this information. Is it secure? So what you do today is you basically you answer them, well, we invested a million dollars in buying a new, a new vendor, a new software, and we're hoping it's going gonna, it's gonna to protect us. That's correct. And That's but, what you yeah. but you're not answering the question. You're basically avoiding the real question of, are we secure? You've decoded our uh, <laughs> approach, but you're right. You, you do bypass it because it's been a very difficult question. And it is always that question. And it's always some version of, are we secure? Are we OK? Are we OK? Yeah. So XM Cyber, that's what we want to answer for you. And in that term, we're a bit of a, a unique animal. So we want to tell you, we, what we'll do is basically, we'll create a, a, we created a solution 
which mimics an adversary in your network, basically showing you how hard it is for an adversary landing on, on a random point, let's say on the, someone from marketing, someone from HR, how it is for them to actually reach the critical data, the customer information, you know, this, the, mm. the CEO's computer, for example. You want to answer that question and you want to answer that question continuously and safely. Okay, so, you know, today you have, uh, you have manual red team exercises, which is great. You do manual red team exercise, you bring this team, they come, they do this large exercise, you do it once, twice a year, once a year, you get this huge report. By the time you actually, and, and this is very valuable, but by the time you actually finish understanding and implementing the report, your network is completely different. So we are telling people you need to test all the time all the time and gradually improve your uh, your security posture so think about it like going uh, going to the doctor once a year and asking him can you please fix me versus living a healthy lifestyle you need to exercise you need to take care of yourself you need to always make sure that you are doing things right so this is what xm cyber comes to do uh, and in that term i think we're a bit of a unique uh, in the breach and attack simulation yeah, makes sense now you say control validation a lot. What's a control? Is it like a firewall? Oh, is, it oh. a, is it an IT thing? Is it, wh what do you mean by that? Okay, so in your network you have different security controls. Security controls be procedures. Yeah. You know, your IT are going to connect to computers using a, in a specific mechanism. They're not going to use the domain admin for different stuff that they don't require. And it might be solutions. So you might have an EDR, you might do patching, you might do uh, threat intelligence. So you have all those things that's supposed to guard your network. Those are the security controls. And and really, if you look at the breach and attack simulation market, you see many vendors that are focused on answering this question: Are my security controls properly configured? Mm -hmm. And that's a great question, and it's important because obviously, if you buy an EDR and it's not configured right, then what's the point? Not configured right means I've purchased something, a next generation firewall or something, <clears throat> and I've embedded it in the network but it's either the rule set is wrong or it's in the wrong place or it's not connected to the right other system is it is that what it's you mean exactly that's it's exactly what oper I mean. operator error exactly okay so i mean you have you have this next generation firewall but if you didn't update the signature or if you open the port and then it's it's not really protecting you right. so it's good and it's important and you need to always test that and that's part of what xm cyber does but in contrary to other vendors... Uh, By the way, how do you know what the right configuration is? Do you guys have to be the experts? So what we that do... That seems hard to do. So what we do is basically, we're not coming to tell you, oh, you have configured it right. There is the best practices of how you actually configure. We're doing, basically, we're simulating an adversary, trying to get from a random point right. towards the critical assets. And from that you can start understanding, oh, wait, he managed to make a lateral movement between this network segment and that network segment. So why is that? Isn't, isn't my firewall supposed to block him? Why, why could he connect that way? Or we seen him, okay, so he managed to hijack an RDP session, but didn't we install two-factor authentication? Oh, we didn't implement it on that server. So that's what we're showing. We'll show you the attack vector from the bridge point Towards the critical asset. So, so like in a retail environment, could they use XM Cyber to convince the the control team, the security team, <coughs> that say from the intranet or enterprise, you can't see uh, the credit card point of sale machines? Is that is that something you could do? So, so like convince the board. Look, there's no way our third parties coming in through a gateway can see so you can POS you, machines. So you can tell the system to start from that segment in the network. Because that'd be try pretty reach, valuable, obviously. And, and try time. to reach. And yeah. it will try. That's yeah. what it will do in a continuous and safe manner. So that's obviously very important because, yeah. you know, let's say you're going uh, you're gonna to come and when you do like manual exercises, red team exercises, you bring a presentation interesting a firm and they're going to try to get from that place to the yeah, to right. the PCI segment and they'll tell you well 1% chance that we're going to crash something so you can say well 1% chance you know it's not going to happen for me I'm not that I, it's I'm not going to be that 1% okay. but imagine that we're telling you now test every day so yeah. that 1% becomes three times a year so you have to find a way that you can actually uh, test those things 
in a way that is completely safe. And then you can come and tell the board, you know, we've actually, we're running a test every day. Can someone actually get from whatever area in the network to the PCI segment? And the answer would be no. Now you can come and tell that to the board, and that's, that's amazing. So what is a, what's a deployment look like? Am I dropping agents, sensors, you know, components around the network? And, yes. And so how do I know where to put them? So basically, uh, the way XM Cyber works is by deploying sensors on the endpoints and servers. Yeah. Uh, the w reason we do that is in order for us to be able to balance between the safety and the accuracy. Okay. The fact that we're actually having those sensors on the on the endpoints and servers allows us to test all the conditions to validate. Okay, an adversary can actually do something without requiring us to actually activate real exploit, which one might you know crash the system. Obviously, very low chance of crashing the system, but as we said before, three times a year is not that low for a, for a CISO. Um, so you'll deploy that. Uh, usually about 10% of your network, at least. Obviously, the more you deploy, the better. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what we found out is that if you do take about 10%, you know, some servers, some, uh, some endpoints, you know, people from IT, uh, you will get a good accuracy of how what what's my positioning in the network. You, you will find most of the important attack vectors and most of the issues that you actually need to remediate, and uh, and and that is great news. That is great news because now you can actually start looking at prioritizing. Mm -hmm. uh, we we said okay, you deploy those things and you tell the system to run run every day. Now you see okay how hard it is for an adversary to get to the critical assets which you defined. And you can see, oh, so I see that in all the attack vectors, eventually they come and leverage this misconfiguration. They get to this guy from IT and he has too many permissions. Or you find choke points, or you find information that actually helps you prioritize what you're doing. And, you know, in, in cybersecurity, finding problems and stuff that we need to, to improve is, is easy. That's true. He, talk to every CISO and ask him, do you have, uh, do you have enough stuff that you need to, to improve, to fix? And, and, and look, look at it there. Yeah, 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 so yeah. the key thing is to understand what is most important. What is most important? What will actually make the most change uh, in my security posture? So this is another great benefit, I think, from, from uh, the perspective of the product. Yeah, but the, the deployment is, as we said, very, very simple. Yeah. The, you deploy the sensors. Uh, you connect to, they connect to the server, uh, either on-prem sensitive environments like banks, uh, and, but either or in our cloud, so. Now the scenarios you run, are they driven by any frameworks like the MITRE ATT&CK or some other sort of popular frameworks that lay out these taxonomies of attacks? Do you guys make use of those so, or do you have your own? So we make use of those, basically we link and relate all the findings, all the methods that we use to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Yeah. So you can, you know, if you're working. It's been working, very popular. It's yeah. been very popular. Yeah. Uh, I think it's still, it's doing great stuff for the industry. <coughs> I think it still has a long way to, to go and improve. There are different things that are not there yet. For yeah. example, just yesterday I was, uh, I was talking to someone and asked, okay, so basically all sorts of men in the middle attacks, where are they in the MITRE ATT&CK framework? And I was like looking and say, well, it really depends, uh, and uh, so there's a lot of stuff that the framework still needs to get more mature, but it does bring a lot of benefit. The fact that you have a common language in the, in right. the industry is, is amazing. So we really do uh, align ourselves with the MITRE ATT&CK framework uh, in the places that we can, in the places that we can't, we basically... You do what you do. Exactly. Right. Uh, but the way the scenarios work is the customer defines you know, what's important for him. Uh, we would help him. Uh, both the system would actually give him uh, all sorts of recommendations and help him find the critical assets. And obviously the customer success team will guide him, you know, what are best practices. So you know, your database is a, is a, is a, simple, uh, is a simple example. But in many, in many of the customers I see that they define the executives in the the executive, how hard it is for an adversary to actually get to the, uh, the executive team computers. Um, so you define, the, you define the targets and we work from that. Let me ask you, I, I, I see incredible value in the reachability analysis and 
visibility to target. I mean, we mentioned a minute ago point of sale and other things. <clears throat> Those are obvious use cases. But in, in, in situations where visibility or reachability is okay, but that there may be some application running that may or may not be properly configured, are you able to go sort of probe at the application level a little bit, or do you or do you partner up with other tools for yeah. that? So how do I how do I go deeper if I need to do some of that? Yeah. Okay. So well, in terms of application layer, what we'll do is on standard applications. So let's say you have WordPress, you have you know all sorts yeah. of common stuff. Then you know we we do test them, test for configuration errors, mm -hmm. test for uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, stuff like that, but if it's uh, an in-house development application, then that's that's basically where we start. That's where we're telling you, okay, you someone can actually with some other go other go and do either your internal red team or yeah. go and do just a, a dedicated testing for that specific environment, and uh, and I think that's also, you know, just not just in terms of uh, of the, of the testing. I think that in the organizations, usually it's also very very different teams and different personas, people that are in charge of the infrastructure security versus the application owners. And so we'll tell you test, we'll test and show you how you can actually get until the devices, until the network, uh, or we'll show you stuff in a uh, known application. But if it's an in-house application that you developed, you need to test it uh, separately. That makes sense. Now, you and I were talking earlier a little bit about um, whether this type of simulation finds its way into the compliance frameworks because I think we both agree that it's kind of there, but it's not it's certainly not bullseye because when the frameworks were written, this was a technology was that hadn't really been invented yet. Well, yeah. What do you think when, when you when you take out your crystal ball and think so, you know, in uh, years is it well, what's going to happen here? In the future, I believe that those sort of tools are going to be uh, helping and and be part of the way you do the compliance. Mm. Uh, think about it, for example, two, two types of uh, things that compliance requirement usually require you is vulnerability management and penetration testing. So vulnerability management, what usually happens is they ask you, you have a vendor, you work with some kind of vulnerability assessment tool in-house, you're testing all the time and you're finding the vulnerability and you're patching and you're doing this continuously. And every, every once in a while you have an approved vendor that is coming to check if you're actually working correctly, if you're, doing, if you're doing things right. Because we understand you cannot bring an external tester to audit and do the vulnerability management and your entire patch management process and all of that you know, every day. That's not reasonable. Uh, so you bring every once in a while to just verify that you're working correctly. On the other hand, in the penetration testing, what usually the compliance requirements today ask you is to go and do like once every six months, once every major change, that's mm. another common thing, because uh, there were no automation in that, in that field. But today, as more and more tools are coming that can actually test, the, do the same thing that the penetration test, that the red team exercises do automatically, you will start having uh, requirements telling you, okay, you need to do this automatically all the time, in-house, and every once in a while, just like in the vulnerability management, you bring an approved vendor to verify that you're working correctly, that you're actually remediating the stuff, you're fixing things, you are using the tools properly. So I believe that would be the way the market will move. No, I hope you're right. That sounds like something that will be very helpful. You know, right now, enterprise teams are struggling so much. It's like yeah. Every day, it seems to get worse, right? It doesn't seem like the defense is catching up much at all yeah. to, to my heart. I, I think, you know, obviously, you know, both the, the hackers and the defenders are, are making progress, but it's an at easier rates. It's a, it's an easier job for the for the adversaries. They only need to find, you know, one issue, they need to find a new technique. And the adversaries, they need to add more and more the security controls. They need to learn more aspects. So it's a much harder task for them. So I think they're both running fast. We, we did a um, cyber range exercise over at NYU. All oh, press yeah. and writers and reporters are there and all going around. There's in the, the defensive room, we have 40 or 50 students there working. In the offense room, two guys. And nobody, I was waiting for someone to say, 
Boy, two on 40, is that a fair is fight? A and fair you and I would both say, yeah, that's yeah, about right. It's, it's, that's about it's right. exactly, because they Two need to find, defenders. they need to find their one path where nobody looks. Yeah. And you need to actually make sure that you block all the different entrants, that you are monitoring everything, that the stuff that you yeah. cannot actually block, that you actually detect, you know, that you'll catch them when they're trying to sneak in. Yeah. And it's a much harder job. Well, I appreciate you stopping by. I know you know New York well. You went to high school near in the D.C. area, so yep. you, know this, yep. you know this area. Well, as you guys make progress, you come back and share with us again? Definitely. Good. You're Definitely. welcome here anytime. Great. Thank it you very much. It was just wonderful seeing you. Yep. Great. You too. And we will see you next time.